yesterday we talked about don't walk around the trade show with all of your secret sauce and give it to 15 suppliers and then pick one supplier at the end of the trade show and hope those 14 other suppliers don't run with your idea. So be careful with your idea. Maybe use a representative product, something similar to yours. Maybe it's your competitor. Just to get the, the quotation process going and narrow it down. Now once production starts, <clears throat> your product is out in the market, say it's fashion accessories, so you don't really have any intellectual property as a barrier to entry, it's one thing to force your competitors to um, work back in the supply chain and kind of replicate what you've done. It's another thing to have your supplier knock you off. So you know that, that's why monitoring and enforcement are so important. Um, one area of business that's coming up, and I, I do this a bit, is called black box manufacturing. We're essentially advising customers who have a proprietary design to protect the secret sauce in the black box. So maybe the timepiece comes from one supplier and the secret sauce is in a cool band with silicon. All right, whatever. So that silicone band comes from one supplier, the packaging from another supplier, and the um, watch mechanism from a third supplier. And then behind closed doors, my 170 employees get things together put the customer's label on it and send it to the customer at Amazon, wherever. So know that if your product can be compartmentalized, there are ways to physically protect your ideas so that you don't have to rely on the contracts and monitoring and enforcement exclusively. I'll talk about intellectual property for hours because I've been beat up and had lots of horror stories. Um, and if you visit my blog on YouTube, you'll see plenty of them. Okay. <clears throat> Now, there's been a lot of talk um, in the past few days about you know, code of conducts.